This next dish I'm going to be making was a last minute substitute to the series. Even though each episode is methodically thought through, I'm happy to finish the series on this dish. Now, the venison that I've got here was caught by a local gamekeeper who I got talking to who actually shot the deer about three miles from the house. And what a better way to finish up now cornering each corner of the island. And the reason I've chosen this dish today is because it's one dish that I cooked for a French party. In fact, it was the owner of a well-known French uh, jewelry company. What I've got in front of me here is the venison tenderloin. Now, it's a cut that is almost forgotten about. You've got the fillet of the venison tucked under the ribs. You've got the tenderloin. Now, the dish today is a steak tartare, or a take on steak tartare. It's a venison tartare. You're probably thinking alarm bells ringing here, raw meat. Now, we cannot get any fresher than this piece of meat here. It's been slaughtered humanely. It's been hung for the right amount of time. And it's been chilled. We've really been cautious here as we are working with raw meat, but it's going to be cured. This is the saving grace in the dish. All the other components, think of it as uh, like uh, a gravelax of salmon, the way that's sort of cured. And everything is processed and dealt with 10 minutes before serving. So we're really on top of hygiene here. The components of the dish. This already looks like a, a finished dish, all the colors and how it's, it's just arranged in the bowl here by accident for this episode, that's all it is. One tablespoon of finely chopped shallot, one finely chopped tablespoon of carrot, one tablespoon of apple, some gherkin, some caper, some celery, and one fat clove of garlic which has been minced and some lovely flat leaf parsley. That is the components, along with some Harris gin, so I wanted to get some juniper that worked really well with venison, so we're going to add a splash of that in there as well, which is going to help cure it. And the, the usual suspects in a, in, a, in a tartare are Tabasco, Liam Perrins and olive oil, and just a basic seasoning salt and pepper. And to serve with this dish, I'm going to be making a walnut ketchup. I've got some lovely pickled walnuts here, which we'll get to later on. Right, to prepare the venison, first of all, sharp knife, everything is cold. This has been in the fridge for the little duration and in to the freezer for about 10 minutes just to get it solidified so it cuts easily. Now we want to let's cut this down first. We want to cut it into about five mil dice. And we really want everything as cold as possible. Our chopping board, the knife, the bowl we're going to be using, get everything into the freezer. Now the dish itself, it's going to have so much flavour. Let's see that lovely. And the venison itself, low in calories, it's lean. And this is just a fantastic dinner party starter. And the beauty of it is, a little goes a very long way. So I've got about 300 grams of loin here. Let's tidy up our board. It's a lovely color. It's just absolutely stunning. The, the knife is just gliding through it as well. So the components of the dish that I've got, you can prepare that beforehand. But this, no more than 10 minutes before serving. I don't really like chopping on marble, but the reason I've got it is because I've had it in the freezer as well, so it's ice cold. I want the five mil dice that we're cutting, we want it to retain that shape.
So we'll put that into a cold bowl. So there we have it. It's a 300 grams of the tenderloin into the five mil dies. We want to work really quickly here. It is very important. So we'll 10 minutes before serving. There's ample time for the simple starter. So delicious. If you wanted to cook this tenderloin, you want to cook it as rare as you can. And you want to eat it as quickly as you can as well. So, into our bowl. We want to season this. A few turns of salt. Turns of pepper. We'll take our ingredients now. So in with a shallot, in with a carrot. Carrot's gonna give it texture and flavor. The apple as well, lots of flavor. The gherkin, some piquancy. The celery, again, flavor and texture. The garlic, and our finely chopped capers as well. The capers are just gonna add that just slight salty edge from, from the from the buds itself. Also cold spoon. To that we want to add about a tablespoon of olive oil. Good quality olive oil. The impedance, I've got it in the squeezy bottle. I buy it in four litre um, tubs. Be chefy thing, but it's handier for filming today. Just a couple of drops of that. Tabasco. Again, just be cautious here. Maybe eight drops there. It's the kind of thing you actually put on the table so people can help themselves too as well. Flat leaf parsley. in there as well. Squeeze the lemon juice. Mindful of any pips going there. That's just gonna freshen everything up. I just wanna now mix it. So we don't want to add each ingredient and mix and mix. We want to be very careful with it and give it the respect it deserves. And see already the colours there. Now, like I said, juniper and venison, a fantastic combo. So what I'm going to do is, I'm just going to add a couple of tablespoons of the gin. We taste first of all. Mm. Yeah, the seasoning is just perfect. There's enough of the impedance, enough Tabasco for for the happy medium. You know, salt and pepper. Yeah, I'm happy with that. So we'll pop that into the fridge. Ten minutes, and we'll get on with the walnut ketchup. What I've got here is 200 grams of pickled walnuts. What I've done is I've taken 100 ml of the vinegar from the jar, which well, it was 100 ml that was in the jar, and I've boiled that just very quickly until the sugar dissolves with 50 ml, sorry, 50 grams of 
light brown sugar and 50 grams of dark brown sugar and there we have it so we get that into the processor straight in now i just want to add a little bit of a liquid at a time Now we're just going to pass our ketchup so we get it super smooth. The classic sieve with no handle. So many things have been passed. I just find it easier to use this sieve. I think it's a chefy thing to be honest. So we'll pass that. See that now? How super smooth that is. So there we have it. We've got the tartare resting. We've got another five minutes on that in the fridge. We've got a ketchup, which is gonna lend a sharpness to it as well and the walnuts work really well with the venison. And the complement to the dish is obviously the egg itself. And I've got Edith and Finley's harvest hens, the eggs I'm gonna use, the yolk I'm gonna use on this dish. So we'll get plating up. Now for plating up, it's been 10 minutes. I've had everything in the freezer. Uh, so the, th the flavors have developed in the venison the Tabasco, the gin, the all the other components have started to penetrate that venison and cure it. Now, it's a, it's not a dish you'll see very often, if at all, on on most menus. Um, again, a lot of caution has to be applied with this, as we are working with, even though it's been cured, raw meat. Uh, but I'm at home. I'm showcasing this dish to you. It's up to yourselves how you want to move forward with trying this dish out. I certainly would give it a whirl. It's just a sunny, stunning, simple dish. To plate up, I'm gonna showcase the dish itself. There's no, nowhere to hide, really, on this, on the white plate. It's a white canvas, and just the simplicity of this is just gonna showcase the whole dish. So we'll take a little teaspoon. Like I said, a little does go a long way. And we'll just start pressing the venison down. Just want to be gentle with it, don't be too harsh with it. Please, with respect. I'll just make a wee indent in the center just for the yolk to sit in. I don't want that sliding off. And for our walnut ketchup, I just want to arrange it. Around the plate. metrical as we can. Give it a little ring. And use that 
Eggs. Since we're just wanting the yolk for this, again, freshness is key. I don't think it will be any fresher than what I've got on my hands just now. Just sit that gently on. So there we have my venison tartare. The simplicity of it is just phenomenal. The flavour is just so immense. To serve, just serve with some nice crackers or some lovely um, uh, crusty bread just toasted. Once you crack into that yolk, what it does, it just, it's just smooth and silky and it's, it's almost like a, a, a custardy feel to it. Once it uh, sort of mixes in with, with the venison itself on the palate, it just gives that sort of custardy feel to the whole dish. The walnut ketchup just cuts into that as well, just gives it that sharpness and flavour that is required for this dish. Give it a whirl. If you can get the freshest of ingredients, please, please try this dish. Enjoy.